Good evening, Jayhawks, and welcome to the third episode of Brains and Beauty. My name is Antonique, and I will be your host this evening. I want to welcome the KU student body back to school as last week was our spring break. I hope you're again back into the swing of classes and remaining strong as we knock out the rest of our semester. Let's take a moment and see what the beauties have been up to last week for our spring break. Emma, she went back to her old high school to visit her friends and went to a school assembly for Swine Week. It was a week-long fundraising event at her school. Jenna scored tickets to Kansas City's Comic-Con as she went to Sailor Moon and seemingly had a great time at the star-studded event. From Corbin Blue, Matthew Lillard, and the voice of Timmy Turner, Tara Strong, she created plenty of memorable moments. London was a hot spot for many hot Jayhawks. Lolly and I went to separate trips exploring London for two different study abroad programs. Shay went to Six Flags in Dallas. Our technical director, Lindsay, she went to the mountains and spent time at CU Boulder with her friends. And then she went to the Big 12 tournament and shot videos and pictures of the KU men's basketball team. Stephanie stayed in Lawrence and did Legos and loved on her pets. Claire went to Scottsdale with a couple of her girlfriends for break. Let's jump to Claire for a couple tips on how to pack and how her senior spring break went. Hi everyone, my name is Claire and today I'm going to give you some tips for packing. As Antonique mentioned, I went to Scottsdale, Arizona with some of my girlfriends for spring break. It was our senior spring break, so we all wanted to do a fun girls trip all together. The trip was a blast and the perfect last trip for all of us together. We had pool days, went on an open air party bus, went on a hike, movie nights, and had the most delicious meals, including a hibachi chef that came to our Airbnb. It was truly a trip I will never forget. While spring break may be over, the memories linger on, and so does the anticipation of packing for your next trip. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or a first-timer, efficient packing is key to a stress-free travel. Here are some of my tips I've learned from experience to making the packing process smoother to ensure your packing experience will be efficient and enjoyable. My first tip is to create a list of everything you think you will need so that you don't forget anything. It's always the worst feeling when you forget something and have to either buy it or live without it for the trip. There's also always the risk of overpacking. Creating a list ensures that you bring everything you really need. My second tip is to plan your outfits beforehand. Instead of bringing random tops and bottoms that you might wear, creating set outfits ensures you don't overpack. It may seem extra, but one of my favorite things to do is to create a lookbook slideshow before going on a big trip. I include photos of my outfits, links to items that I want to purchase for the trip, and have every outfit planned out by day. Before our senior trip to Vegas over fall break, I created a slideshow with my outfits for each day and night in advance, and it helped me to stay organized. Another good idea is to try on each outfit and take photos so that you know you like the way it looks and fits together. Then, from there, you can create an album on your phone with all of your outfits. My third tip is to use packing cubes. I used to not use packing cubes, and I can honestly say that they have made a world of a difference. Packing cubes maximize space and keep things neatly separated. I bought these off Amazon and Target, but you can get them from almost anywhere. I also have these Wear Wash from Quiche that have seriously been a lifesaver. It's also a good idea to roll your clothes instead of folding them to save room. My fourth tip is all about the toiletries. Whether I'm checking a bag or sticking with a carry-on, I opt for small size containers to pack my liquids. Not only does this strategy comply with TSA standards, but it also maximizes space and allows me to neatly organize all my essentials into one toiletry bag. For my fifth tip, let's focus on the little extras. During spring break, I made sure to include essential medication and a travel pill case and packed a small first aid kit for any emergencies. The first aid kit De definitely came in handy when I got blisters from my heels. I also packed hand sanitizers, wet wipes, wrinkle releaser spray, sunscreen, an eye mask, and more in my extras kit to ensure I was prepared for any situation. I would also recommend packing a tech bag with your phone charger, portable charger, camera, and anything else you might need. As I wrap up tonight's segment on packing tips, remember to assess your essentials, create a list, make an outfit lookbook, utilize space-saving techniques, use packing cubes, travel size toiletries, and create an emergency extras kit. Whether you're planning a weekend getaway or an extended vacation, these packing tips can make all the difference. Safe travels. Stay tuned for Antonique with updates about Black Women's History Week.
We haven't had a show in a few weeks, so I wanted to take a moment to fill you in on what we missed. The last week of Black History Month was Women's History Week. The Emily Taylor Center for Women and Gender Equity held several events to celebrate the women here at KU, their blackness and their womanhood, womanhood here in Lawrence. From a webinar focused on mental health awareness to Black Roses Soiree, KU embraced and showed out for the support for the black woman here on this campus. With that being said, the Oscars was last Sunday. Stephanie got a list together of her favorite looks of the night. Hello, my name is Stephanie Reif, and today I'm going to be talking about the 96th Academy Awards, aka the Oscars, which took place last Sunday, March 13th. There was a lot of good fashion this year, so we can't talk about everything that was there. So instead, we'll be focusing on my top five looks of the night in no particular order. Starting off with the wonderful America Ferreira, she was wearing a gorgeous pink Versace gown, and I love how this complements her skin tone. She was seen mostly wearing black during the Barbie Press tour, so I'm very glad to finally see her in some pink for her Best Supporting Actress nomination for her role in Greta Gerwig's Barbie. Next, we have Anya Taylor-Joy, who was wearing one of my favorite outfits of the night, this stunning dress by Dior Couture. I feel like Joy always looks amazing, but she really stood out tonight to me when compared to other red carpet looks. This dress's detail is stunning and I don't think I've seen her ever look better. Next, Billie Eilish was wearing Chanel and I will say this about everybody, but she looks absolutely gorgeous. Eilish also took home her second Oscar last Sunday for best original song for What Was I Made For, which was featured in Greta Gerwig's Barbie. She also performed her song at the show and to say it was an emotional performance would be an understatement. Next on our list, we have Emma Stone, who is wearing Louis Vuitton, and I love this dress so much. The shape and the color of this dress is so flattering on her, and I literally have no notes. Stone did have a wardrobe malfunction during the show, though, as she revealed when she won her second Best Actress Oscar for her role in the 2023 film Poor Things that her dress was, in fact, broken. Now, if you did not watch the show or see clips of it afterwards, you might be wondering, how did she broke her dress? Or break her dress, sorry. This segues into our last outfit of the night, which is Ryan Gosling wearing Gucci. Gosling had two outfits during the Academy Awards, one being this very classic all-black suit with silver detailing, and the other, my favorite, being a hot pink, fully crystallized suit, which he wore during his I'm Just Ken performance. Stone said that during her speech that she thinks her dress broke during Gosling's performance, which makes sense to me because it was insane. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend watching it. It was amazing. Gosling was also nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Greta Gerwig's Barbie. Well, that is all I have for you tonight, but next on Beauties and Brains, we are going to look at our weekly weather forecast with Emma. Check her out. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm here with this week's fashion forecast. So taking a, a look at our weekly weather outlook, we can see that we are starting to get into those lower temperatures again and those more cloudy skies. Now we also do have a lot of sports games both here and across the country. So some things to be aware of are once again, those rain and that those clouds towards later in the week and especially Sunday and Monday, we're gonna be seeing lots of wind and some rain. Now zooming in and we're gonna be heading to Salt Lake City in Utah for if you're planning to attend the men's basketball game against Stanford Thursday night. Taking a look at the weather in Salt Lake City, we're looking at a high of about 64 degrees with those partly cloudy skies. And at night, a low of 45 degrees, but the good news is those clouds will be going away, so we're going to be see mo seeing mostly clear skies if you're planning to travel to Utah to see them play. The women are also planning to travel for their game where they will be playing in Los Angeles, California. Their high is going to be 65, so pretty similar to Utah, and they are playing Saturday afternoon, so we are going to be seeing some showers earlier in the day and then partly cloudy skies as the day goes on. Their nightly forecast, we're looking at a low of about 49 degrees with some more few passing clouds, maybe a little less than during the day. 
Now taking a look at our what to wear, this week once again we are starting to see a little bit more rain and a little bit more clouds, so it's always nice to have a comfy outfit that you can go to and walk around in the rain in, and you can't go wrong with pairing it up with some classic gold jewelry. Another option as we are getting into sunnier days is of course a puffer vest to match with pretty much any outfit that you have as well as a black baseball cap and of course the classic mom jeans and white converse that everybody seems to be wearing now. Taking a look specifically at sports fashion in case you're either planning to travel to the games or you're just staying here in Lawrence to watch. You can't go wrong with wearing your favorite player's jersey or shirt. Me personally, I'm always going to go with Johnny Furphy and Holly Kerskeeter as my favorite player's shirts to wear. However, you can also pair these up with your Kansas baseball outfits for these upcoming games, especially this weekend when they plan to take on UCF. We have the classic uh, long sleeve Kansas baseball shirt. And of course, if you really want to be a true baseball fan, you can also wear a Kansas uh, baseball jersey. With those, of course, you have a multitude of bottoms to choose from. You have your jeans, you have your bike shorts, and you have your yoga pants. Now again, this weekend we are going to be looking at some rain, so it's always handy to have a rain jacket with you and a Kansas baseball cap to match pretty much whatever. Well, that's all from me. After this, we are going to be having a couple more of our girls to talk. Hi, my name is Ella Harone, and today for Beauty Corner, I'm going to be talking about celebrity makeup, wellness, and fashion brands. Starting out strong with Skims by Kim Kardashian, I'm a huge fan of this shapewear and clothing brand. Co-founded by Emma and Jens Grady, Skims was launched in 2019 and encourages inclusive sizing, body positivity, and comfortable materials. Skims lovers have raved about their sculpting bodysuits in casual dresses, including the viral soft lounge long slip dress. The neutral colors are a wardrobe staple and can be dressed up or down with any outfit. Skims is definitely worth the money. Now moving on to skincare, we're going to be talking about Emma Chamberlain's partnership with Bad Habit. Self-care oriented, Bad Habit uses clean formulas and adds functional fragrances and ingredients to soothe their users. Becoming their global brand ambassador and creative director in 2020, Emma has shared her love for the brand's mission. She has shared that although she isn't always consistent with her skincare routine, she is very dedicated to their products. She loves their hemp nourishing facial oil and the Total Reboot AHA BHA enzyme peel. 
I have tried the Bad Habit Eye and Hand Creams and they are definitely some of my faves. When it comes to makeup, I'm not a professional by any means, but I can swear by Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty. Selena created the brand to challenge beauty norms by shaping positive conversations about self-acceptance and mental health. I've used the Rare Beauty blush and concealer for years, and they have become a staple in my makeup routine. Not only are they vegan and cruelty-free, but 1% of their annual sales go to the Rare Impact Fund that expands mental health services in underserved communities. You can get a lot out of your makeup and know that your money is going to a good place. Finally, going back to fashion, one of my personal favorites is Tyler the Creator's Golf LeFleur brand. Golf includes high-end apparel, footwear, accessories, and even dazzling nail polish colors. Golf is, as they say, a whimsical world that reflects the ideas of curiosity, color, harmony, and opulence. Even if you aren't interested in high or street fashion, there is something everyone will like from Tyler the Creator's brand, if you're willing to splurge. Now we're going to Lolly with Color Me Mine. Hi guys, so I know that I talked about accessories last week, but honestly, I'm gonna talk about them again. I just can't get enough. And when I was trying on my mom's earrings for spring break and going to London, you know, you gotta pack light, so I was gonna wear what I was gonna wear the entire time. And I realized as I was looking in the mirror and like trying on my different silvers and golds that, oh my God, I just glow in gold. And so I was like, you know, I gotta figure this one out. So I went on to the classiest website in the world, Reddit, and I looked up a good uh, color matching website and I found Vivaldi Color Lab. Now I cannot highlight this thing enough. It helped me find my season almost immediately. I really thought that I was going to be a spring, but by switching through these colors, I just figured out what made me shine. And I really thought that I was going to shine in these yellows and these like these kind of warm colors, but I really shined in like the blue purples and the green blues and all this stuff that really resonates in autumn. And so I figured out that I was more of a soft or warm autumn by using this website. And so now, as you can see up there, is some of the colors that really pop on me specifically. And through this website, I was able to cycle through all of the different um, like shades. You know how on TikTok we all see these patterns and these fabrics being laid across people and we're like oh my god that looks so good i got to do that for free it was amazing and you know really feeling that sense of confidence comes from being in control for me so i having this idea of what really scientifically looks good on me helped me immensely with feeling confident in what I could wear and so I put up some inspo about specifically what looks good on a soft autumn and I want to impart all of you to just if this is gonna help you feel more confident go back to it but if this is gonna help you mess around with creativity and find out what really mess like really kind of suits you that's awesome thank you guys for listening and I'm gonna throw it back to Antonique alrighty thank you Lolly uh, that is all for this week's show for Brains and Beauties. Until next time, stay classy, KU.